Hey, how's it going? This is Gazelig for Grinderschool.com. Here today with part number five of my five dollar two read by one add-on tournament. Um, I said in probably the part one, uh, I went pretty deep in this tournament. I didn't want to give away the result. Um, but uh, as I've just looked at it, um, this is the final two tables. Um, so one, two, three, four, five. So it must be on the direct. Uh, final table bubble. Um, so I've realised perhaps I didn't discuss too much about uh, that in the last um, part, last episode. Uh, so I'll try and talk a little bit about that today uh, and then we'll be able to look at some really cool interesting spots at the final table. Now there are some really really cool spots at the final table. Um, some of them are not very straightforward. Um, I'll try and explain my reasons behind making the plays that I did. Uh, some of them seem to be like a really tight, tight lay down pre-flop with very strong hands. Um, so hope, hopefully I can uh, uh, kind of tell you why I did that. Um, and let's move forward then. So uh, this is the last time we had in the previous um, part. Um, so moving forward, what I'll try and do, um, we'll try and go through each hand so we can see if there's any dynamic to pick up on. Um, just on a button raise. Uh, three bet uh, for less than 20 big blinds. So it seems Fairly standard. I don't want to be giving up too many buttons at this stage of the, the tournament. I think I'd probably raise almost any two cards um, just because I can put pressure on these two players. Um, I have a similar size stack to the big blind. Um, we can uh, we can eliminate the uh, well we can eliminate both players. Um, Tiago Diaz in a small blind is not going to want to tangle with this too much. Uh, plus he only has what's that like twenty. 25 big blinds, so he could three bet shove over us, um, but he's not going to be doing it particularly like right, what right on the final table bubble. I wouldn't imagine. Uh, I decided to take one off with a king five off suit. Um, we've got a three bet here and a four bet. I would imagine this has got to be a um, a strong hand. Um, I can't remember from the previous part whether Kermis was uh, making plays or not. Um, Let's just look at the sizing here. So the sizing is pretty small. He's using, uh, he doesn't need to make it uh, very big here. Um, he's betting 145k to really put at risk uh, the 850k uh, that's in this uh, in the button stack. Uh, so I really like this this three bet. Uh, so I, I guess in a way he doesn't have to be uh, very strong here at all. Um, it'd be interesting to see how this how this plays out. Uh, he does just decide to fold. So. Um, see that this guy is capable of four betting and this guy is capable of three betting light trying to put pressure on, on the final table bubble. Interesting he didn't take the button spot there. Uh, decided to fold here. Um, the guy is raising from the button, his stack isn't particularly deep, it's less than well, it's about twenty big blinds. Um pretty crappy hand. I mean we're getting really good odds in the in the big blind. Um but um you know I'd want to be a similar size stack. Um, to the player to be peeling with uh, very marginal hands like this. Um, okay, so um, how many chips does he start the hand with? Um, how much is that? 35, um, well, less than 20 big blinds. So he's raised folding from the button. Um, you find that a lot. Um, I think I. Uh, started to do that a little bit more, um, raise folding uh, close to a bubble when it's quite obvious and quite easy to play against weak type players. Um, this can look really, really strong, um, raising off this size stack. Uh, but you see a player do it a few times, uh, you don't have to be too worried about it. This time he does just fold. Oops, you probably see these hands through. Uh, just to less than 20 big blinds, well 20 big blinds, I don't know, less than that, uh, 15 big blinds, effective, shove, blind versus blind, seems fine. Um, again, I could, uh, actually this would probably be a better spot to, to peel, I know it's a, a crappy hand, um, but I wouldn't just be uh, looking to uh, play the, the flop um, based on, you know, if I hit it or not, uh, I can choose to make plays, uh, possibly on um, low boards 
uh, where it's unlikely that to hit the uh, the preflop raiser and more likely to hit my uh, calling range, especially in the in the big blind. Uh, so we've got 2.7x raise again. Decided to three bet and just decided to give this one up. Um, so the small blind decides to defend here. Um, defending from the small blind, obviously he's not getting great odds. Um, so I imagine his hand's got to be fairly strong, decent ASEX hands, Broadway hands, pairs, possibly suited connectors. Uh, I think it's a great spot to see bet. Um, it's also pretty dry. Um, I could expect to be played back at quite a lot of the time. He does call. Um, he could be floating me here with ace high. He could be floating with uh, six, seven, uh, with a ten or four or five. Um, the turn doesn't really change much. Uh, I can't get him to fold pretty much anything um, on the turn. Um, so I'm really like, surprised to see myself bet. I suppose um, I can get him to, to fold weak 5x and 4x hands. Um, you know, he's got to have a 10 or better to continue. Um, and he just, just just does decide to go away. So maybe I had a read on this player as well, uh, that he calls a lot of c-bets and folds to, to double barrels. And he likes to float out of position. So um, I don't think that's a... It's too bad. It's just uh, the two doesn't really change much. Um, so in essence, I'm really... Um, Representing uh, an over pair um, at worst, like ace 10, uh, king 10, jack 10, so top pair uh, in this spot. Um, and thankfully, he just decides to go away. Oh, this could be the close to the final table. I think it is. Um, the, um, let's have a look. The nines in against the aces. Wow. Horrible way to uh, be eliminated on the bubble with aces. Um, so, this is now the final table. Um, what I like to do, I mean, I do it um, probably a few tables before the final table, like two or three tables left. Um, I like to um, shark scope people and OPR people, uh, players uh, just to see how successful they've been. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the video now. Um, I am going to shark scope everyone uh, and bring that up and um, maybe we can get some reads and uh, makes it a little bit easier moving forward uh, in this tournament so I'll be right back okay right so I've done that in shark scope um, just uh, quickly show you that um, these are all the players there uh, I've got a couple of sharks uh, I've managed to put it up to the date uh, of the tournament um, I noticed that this uh, AA kiss guy uh, has gone on to win um, three or four hundred thousand dollars more in the last six months. So, uh, woo for him. Um, so we've got a couple of sharks, um, and then we've got uh, some players who have won sort of 11k plus. Um, interesting, this guy, shark symbol over 369 hands. Um, and then we've got, uh, I would say, probably two two weaker players. Um, uh, we can look at this. I think it's important to look at average uh, average stake. This is a five dollar two read by one add-on. So what's that? About twenty dollars. Um, so um, sort of a regular in this field. Uh, AA Kiss, Kermis regular, and Hammett regular two K. And so we can see the, you know, the uh, these two players, uh, Botos Gambovali play usually play a little bit higher, um, and then these two players play much lower. Uh, not to say that they're not very competent players. Uh, this player is very competent. If you look at like ability-wise as well. Uh, this Valis guy is quite weak. So if we look, um, which players is it? So Valis and Hamit. Uh, Hamit is to our left. Um, with a very short stack, and Felisk is to our right with a you know about 15 big blind stack, maybe even less than that. Um, so there are a lot of players that seem pretty decent. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how this final table moves forward. Uh, hopefully you can see there, um, there's some very competent players, players that have won a lot of money, um, no doubt made a lot of final tables, uh, and perhaps some weaker players. Um, I think you could put pressure on players that. 
uh, whose average stake is a lot lower. Um, it's probably important as well to um, look at the prize jump um, uh, so we can have a look at that. So I'm just going to pause the video again and I'll make sure I get the uh, prize list up as well. One second. Okay, and we're back. Uh, here's the prize um, list. Just uh, quickly put that together in Notepad. Um, so $964 and first is uh, almost $2,400. Um, so obviously we are shooting for the uh, top payout. Um, you know, it's more than 10 times as much as ninth. Um, at the moment, we are in a good uh, position. Um, we have a big stack to our right. Um, better if he was a little bit closer. Um, we're still to our right for most of the most part. Um, so yeah, so we've got a, a great uh, opportunity here. Um, if we look around the table, um, think about uh, this is a really short stack, just over two bigs, less than twenty bigs, just over twenty bigs. Um, 35, uh, more than 30 bigs, less than 30 bigs, 40, 40 bigs, yeah, 40 bigs, uh, again, less than 20, so like 15 bigs. Um, so some quite short stacks around the table. Um, I don't think we need to be um, too keen to get involved early on. Uh, that's not to say that we just should tighten up and just wait for other players to bust. Sometimes that can be uh, quite a profitable move, though. Um, and I think, um, as I said, we, we're, we're shooting for first, um, but we have to, I think, um, just have a look at the uh, prize jumps um, and kind of de decide, you know, what what are we going to be happy um, happy making? Um, I know I speak to a lot of students and, and a lot of coaches and they say, well, you know, you should always go for first. Um, but I think it really should just come down to um, you know how much money you you know you would like to make let's say at this stage we've been playing the tournament for about eight hours um, if you are from um, somewhere where $269 is a lot of money um, for eight hours work um, then it's worth um, just trying to fold out and wait for this guy to bust um, if the uh, twenty only twenty four hundred dollars is going to be what you're aiming for, then you should be looking to you know um, do everything you can to uh, to make that. But you should uh, always try and make your decisions based on real money, because um, until you cash this money out, it's not real. Um, it's just virtual money. And I want to try and move players away from thinking that they always have to shoot for first. When I mean, for so some people making the final table here, um, let's say, and finishing fifth is going to be um, a nice, uh, nice little payday for them. Um, so you know, try and uh, base a decision on your own feeling rather than just someone telling you. Well, you should always go for first, and you should always be looking to make the most profitable um, moves. Um, if someone says, "Have a says to you about plus chip EV, uh, always follow plus chip EV at a final table," um, I wouldn't necessarily listen to them. Um, a lot more comes into play, and hopefully, I'll be able to explain that more as we move forward. Um, so I decided to fold the 10-5 off suit. Uh, interesting that Kiss didn't decide to shove that first early hand. Um, been quite a nice hand uh, to flatten position um, this deep. Uh, we don't get the opportunity. Uh, we get an early hand here and it's first elimination. Um, if I just go back to... Uh, oops, I've kind of just spoil the result there uh, that's not what I wanted to do uh, this faster guy yeah he's the weakest player uh, at the table uh, in my eyes he's played the fewest well, he's, well played the fewest amount of tournaments without um, you know a low buy-in level um, and was not able we're not able to see how much he's actually won um, I think this is a pretty bad play on his part um, Thiago's got no reason to be opening particularly light from early position um, and ace five suited just doesn't it's not just not too good of a shove here uh, he's still got one two three four five players left to act behind um, so I think he um, you know don't do that don't make this play also um, this hammock guy is 
pretty much surefire to be eliminated uh, in the next orbit. And so you need a really strong hand to, to get it in um, when you can pretty much lock up an extra hundred hundred dollars. Um, you know, it's pretty good to be able to do that in the next, let's say, like five minutes, you can make an extra hundred dollars. Um, not many jobs that you could uh, you could say that um, that's like, what, twelve hundred dollars an hour. Um, so I just don't think this is a good play at all, um, even if you are shooting for first place. So our first elimination, uh, Tiago is on the aggression. Um, wow, there's some early eliminations. Uh, let's see, Ace is cracked again. Um, I think this is fine. Uh, this guy has less than 20 bigs. Yeah, I think that's absolutely fine with kings. And ace is obviously standard, uh, pretty easy call. Uh, this gets really, really unlucky. Uh, so that kind of changes uh, things a little bit. We get um, a big stack on our left all of a sudden. Uh, and we get less than a 10 big blind stack in the small blind. Uh, I thought we were going to get an elimination then. And, uh, you know, be uh, quite nice to uh, jump up another $130 for having not done anything. Um, again, not many jobs that you can say you do that. That's it, really, just clicking a mouse and click fold three times and uh, move up an extra hundred dollars. So um, let's have a look at this. Um, it's not a bad hand to to open. Um, looking to steal. Um, we do have a twenty-two big blind stack here. Um, I'll tell you what, it really becomes easier to read how many chips players have when the blinds are at a normal level like this, to twenty forty than. Uh, 17 and a half and 35 um but i think we've got this player to act behind us who could shove um uh, we'd have to well our raise would be bigger than his stack uh this player could shove as well um so i think i'm just gonna play pretty tight pretty snug and uh look to stay out of the way and if players are gonna bust left right and center then we can uh you know lock up quite a lot of money without actually doing anything uh um I wouldn't mind a flat here. We're quite deep, over 30 big blinds deep. Um, just over a min raise, we're going four to one. Um, with suited hand, suited king. Um, his range is probably going to be quite tight from early position, um, so that might be a reason why we want to ditch the hand. Um, but I wouldn't mind peeling here as long as you don't go too crazy. Uh, AA Kiss looking to carry on the aggression. Um, and Hammett gets a double up, which uh, puts him up to four and a half big blinds. Uh, right, let's look at this. Um, we've already seen Tiago, um, or Tiago, however you say it, um, open quite a bit for this final table. Um, I'm not convinced that uh, calling here is going to be the best play. I'm really looking to set mine at this stage. I think a three bet would be better here. Um, to put pressure on him. This will be the first hand that I've played at the final table. And you know, we've got a stack that can really damage damage his. Um I said in some of my um How to Master MTT series about not clashing with other big stacks, especially at final tables. Um but I think this is a good spot. Um it's a pretty high expectation to uh, to three bet here and just look to steal the pot uh, pre flop. Um, he makes less than a half pot bet here. Um, I don't really like my call at all. Um, I mean, I, it, I mean, it's it's a it's a float. The expectation is that he gives up on the turn, and we can then take it down. Um, just don't think that's going to happen um, enough of the time. Um, and which is why, uh, you know, at final table uh, our chips are really really important. And actually just trying to look to set mine in this particular spot uh, isn't particularly good. And I think we should be playing quite aggressively in position uh, here. Um, I could turn my hand into a bluff and decide to raise this flop. Um, he's going to need a jack or better to continue. Possibly like tens and nines if he thinks that we're full of it. Um, but um, yeah, I don't like the float. I think we're kind of just giving chips away and he double barrels. Uh, we have to fold. Um, I just don't like the passive lines like this, um, especially at final tables. Uh, I want to be the aggressor, uh, so I don't recommend that too much. Um, if you can put an aggressive move, pull out an aggressive move at some point, uh, then that's great. Um, but don't just like throw away chips like I just did then. 
Uh, 10 8 offsuit, I can see a raise here, um, but we've got the guy behind us. Four and a half big blinds, obviously, we'd be calling him. Um, kind of a 22, 23 big blind stack in the big blind, could be looking to shove. Uh, so, you know, could make a very big dent in our stack. Um, a kiss as well, it's been pretty active, so interesting to see how he moves on for the rest of the tournament. Um, yeah, I'm glad I decided to, to raise here. Um, my first aggressive move at the final table. Um, do I like a bet or do I like a check back here? Um, I always like to ask students, can I get better hands to fold in this instance? Um, and the answer is definitely not. Um, any hand better than mine is going to call. Um, so can I get any worse hands to to call? Um, I think we get 8x hands. I think we get possibly weaker queen x hands like we get um straight draws and flush draws to call as well um so in that in instance and the bet could work out quite well um and also if i decide to check back um kind of uh almost turns our hand face up that we have something with with showdown value i can't remember what i chose to do i did choose to check it back uh perhaps i just wanted to you know decide i've got middle pair um it's pretty strong uh, I'm not going to get uh, three streets of value off from it. Then maybe I can try and get two streets from the, the turn in the river. Um, when he decides to check now, um, I don't like this check back. Uh, I think we get a lot of value um, from from weaker hands now. 9x hands, 8x hands. Um, still maybe from flush draws if he didn't choose to bet them himself. Um, and then we have to go for some value. Uh, I think that's just, just a far too big a bet on the river. Uh, I think we can bet like much much less than this even something like 40 to 60k just look to get a call from from a weaker hand um, but he does fold uh, ace queen to open um get called by a 20 big blind stack um Like once again, can we get better hands to to fold? Um, I'm not sure Ace King is gonna fold to this uh, this bet, um, and then any pair. I mean, threes, fours, fives, and sixes possibly um, could fold. Uh, but bearing in mind he's got a 20 big blind stack, he could have a really strong range. So I'm not sure if I particularly like this bet. I mean, the bet really is just to try and get rid of him straight away. Um, he does just call, and hopefully I just give this up uh, again. It's not a good spot to double barrel. Um, I just can't see that he is floating with his stack size at this point in the tournament. Um, I just feel like I'm uh, throwing chips away. Um, you know, any jack, jack, queen, king, or ace, uh, I think is a great card to uh, to double barrel. Um, simply because we pick up a, we pick up a pair or we pick up um, some sort of straight draw. Um, but in this instance, it's just not a good it's a good card to bet. Uh, so I wish I hadn't done that. And then we check, and he bets pretty small, trying to get value from whatever it is he has. Thankfully, I just choose to fold. Um, so I don't sure I've played those hands particularly well. Uh, show you it showed there really gamble putty showed you the power of playing in position. Um, uh, so it's what we should be looking to do. But as you can see, uh, we're already down to only 25 big blinds. So not played this final table particularly well at this point. And Hamit doubles up again and goes up to nine bigs. Um, so he's uh, he's flying. Now he picks up a legit... Oh no, I suppose he's shoved with sixes as well. Um, so it's a good hand and eventually gets cracked. Picks up quite a lot of equity on the turn but doesn't get there so we are down to seven players uh, locked up four hundred dollars even by playing pretty atrociously so far um do i call here i think this was something that i've maybe worked into my game in the last uh, six months uh it's flooding with uh, with good odds i mean i know we, we don't we only have like 25 big blind stack at this stage um but a pseudo connector um you know we can make some uh, aggressive plays post flop with this hand um i think the way i played this uh this final table so far though maybe i just uh, decided to take a few hands off and just kind of move on uh 
So Kermis gets it in, uh, good, and loses. So we're down to six. So we've locked up $530 now, which is lovely. Um, so this guy, C. Gillett, let's have a look at him. Uh, so he's played 4,500 tournaments, an average stake of $7.50 with an ROI of 54.7%. So it looks fairly decent, but at, at lower stakes. Um, but we haven't really seen him make any move, um, make any play at the moment. Um, and so I don't think it's a good spot to uh, to light three bet at all. Um, so I see Gillett there, uh, second time he raises gets three bet by a kiss, but pretty much guaranteed to have the goods there considering he's raising off a 16 big blind stack. Uh, interesting three bet um, from a kiss um, to raise that much. What, he's getting pretty good odds, 1.8 to one um, to make the call. Um, his three bet does look pretty strong. Again, once again, he's using uh, leverage. Uh, he's leveraging 225,000 chips to win, uh, to put at, at risk uh, the other 782,000 chips. And he does. This bet doesn't need to be. It needs to work about 50% of the time. It's about the size of the pot, um, so you know it's fairly, fairly good raise. Um, but Gillett has it this time. He's been playing pretty tight, so I'm not surprised that he had the goods there. Um, so a raise, three bet, and a call. Um, this guy only has 20 big blinds behind, so it'll be interesting to see how this hand pays out. So gamble, pussy. Um, seems to me I, I can't see what hands would be good to do that with. Let's have a quick look at him. Um, yeah, his ability rating is pretty high, um, but his ROI 22.5%, uh, average state $40. So he usually plays slightly higher up, but his ROI is pretty small. And he played 2,000 tournaments um, since the 7th of August 1998. Um, maybe he's not you know, massively uh, uh, competent, uh, so that's something else to keep an eye on. Um, so now we've got 16 big blinds. Um, we are now the we are, have the fewest chips at the final table. Um, so I guess we're looking for strong hands, maybe like this one, uh, to get all in. Um, seems pretty good to me. Um, nothing really to say about that. Um, A7 suited, similar to what the uh, guy from here shoved earlier on. Uh, fairly weak player with A5 suited. Um, but we've already shoved the previous hand. I think we're going to get looked up a little bit lighter. We can't really put any... I mean, we affect almost half of his stack, but he's still in the tournament, uh, and yet he can eliminate us. So, you know, and the, and the price the, the prize for eliminating us is an extra $130. So, um, not a good spot to 3-bet. Um, I suppose, in a way, we could make a smallish 3-bet like AA Kiss did, and we raised to, like, 200k. Uh, we still have 16 big blinds if he decides to 4-bet. Um, and it would make our hand look really, really strong. Um, but, um, I mean, you know, we have an ace blocker as well. But uh, I can see why we chose to let that one go. Um, choosing to open here looks fairly strong off our stack size. Um, there's two raises in a row, that's quite nice to get them through. There's be a lot of raises pre-flop. Uh, it's good here raising the king on the on the button, um, just looking to, to steal. Uh, the 100k steal just you know needs to work less than 50% of the time, which is really cool. Um, so a raise, a three bet, and a fold. Um, this is I've been raising quite a lot. I think I must have raised quite a few times in the last couple of orbits. Um, so a kiss has had enough and decided to play back at me. So hopefully I just go back into my shell at this stage. Oops, let's play this hand through just in case. So he goes all in, he folds. So he's raising off a 15 big blind stack, 16 big blind stack. Raise folding. Uh, let's just have a look at this. So 20 big blinds. 
Um, we're now one, two, so with some aggressive moves. Um, I was saying this towards the uh, start of the of the part. Aggressive moves um, are going to be much more profitable than passive moves. Uh, and it kind of goes without saying. Um, it's much better to be uh, to be aggressive. Um, we've seen Diego open quite wide. Uh, I think this is a fine spot to get a uh, hand in. Um, King Ten seems to be fine to get in uh, to raise there. Uh, kind of weird raise from from this player's stack size of like 15 big blinds to make it 2.75x our raise. Obviously, we can't really do anything there. Um, kind of weird spot. Uh, would be plus GBV to shove, um, but in not particularly a huge fan. Um, of that uh, for the times when he wakes up with a bigger hand. Uh, I know it's pretty small, um, but a raise is probably going to accomplish the, the same. Uh, we have seen him to be quite aggressive. You know, if I had maybe 15 big blinds, I think I'd just shove there to avoid having to make a decision if he three bets uh, and probably just fold if he did that. Um, I think it's the first blind versus blind hand that we've had though, so seems fine. This is a pretty loose open. Um, I think I mean the two players in the sta in the blinds have to have a hand now. Um, maybe that was my thinking. Um, so that seems okay. Uh, we get Ace King in the case Ace Jack. Ace King comes out on top. Uh, so Aikis is willing to raise call with Ace Jack off suit. I think that's quite interesting. Let's have a quick look at his stats. Yeah, so he's he's a player that's really really competent. Um, do I like his call with Ace Jack here? Um, Kind of odds is he getting? He's only thirty-eight point seven percent. I think it's interesting when when you look at that. Uh, you look and you think, okay, well, I need thirty-eight seven percent to break even. So let's say I need thirty-nine percent uh, to. Uh, well, let's stick with thirty-eight point seven percent. So we could we could look, put that into poker stove, um, and we could look at the range of hands that we think our opponents have, and we can see if Ace Jack offsuit is a is is a good call there, um, but. Let's say that. Uh, well, let's let's just let's just do that, um, just as a, a learning exercise. Um, so we need to try and find a list of hands that gives us about thirty-eight. Oops. Um, Okay, so with eight eight percent, we are thirty nine point two one five percent to win. So, if we think the player shoving eights and above ace jack off suit, ace ten suited, king ten suited, king jack suited, queen jack suited, king queen suited, as well, um, then it's the right spot to to make the call. In terms of um, being a plus chip EV decision, however, um, just because. We, it seems right in terms of the chips out there. Sixty percent of the time in this particular spot, um, or sixty-one percent of the time, we are going to lose, uh, or this player is going to lose um, all of these chips, uh, which is more than half of his stack. Um, so in that instance, it's not you know not particularly not a particularly good move. However, um, I think that we can add. Let's say we add any pair, any Broadway. Um, suited aces, maybe some of these weaker offsuit aces. Um, then all of a sudden, uh, our equity goes up. Um, still, I mean, forty-five percent of the time we uh, we're going to lose half our stack. And I think this is the the point I'm trying to make is we're much better off trying to get someone uh, to fold. So being the person that puts in the last bet rather than having to be the person that makes the last call. Uh, because you win more by being aggressive, uh, and we m mentioned this at the start earlier on as well. Uh, much better to try. You've got fold equity on your side, um, together with hand equity if called. Um, whereas if you make a call here, all you've got is hand equity, and you have to guess um, what your opponent's range is, uh, which can be you know pretty difficult, especially at a final table. So I think you know I think I would probably fold Ace Jack off suit here. Uh, which seems really crazy because you know, this guy's only shoving what, like 12, it's over 12 big blinds. Um, we're going to think about our chances moving forward. Uh, 
Okay, so we open Ace King. Botos just won with his Ace King. Um, well, this is an interesting hand. Um, so we make a C bet. It's less than half pot. He decides to raise us. We just flat. Um, I think if he is bluffing, um, then we want to try and give him another opportunity to bluff. Uh, I think it's very unlikely that I'm going to fold at any point. Uh, if he has Ace Eight, Ace Seven, Sevens or Eights, then well done him. Um, I just decided to call, and obviously that's a great turn card. Um, when he decides to check back, I would imagine he has a weak sort of ace x hand uh, or a complete bluff. Um, so it'd be interesting to see what I choose to do on the river. I really like that. I'm really glad that I decided to check. Um, if he does have a bluff, he has a great opportunity to shove. Um, he's likely to bet his weaker aces uh, for value, and I think we can check shove. Um, he may well even bet like ace ten um, if he chose to uh, check back that on the t on the turn. Um, we kind of miss out on value from a hand. Let's say he ch chose to raise here with a hand like nine ten suited, where he's picked up a pair. But I just think for the times that he has a an ace x hand or a bluff, we can pick up a lot more chips in this instance. He does just check back. It'd be interesting. Okay, so he did just have a complete bluff, and we played that hand pretty. I pretty pretty optimally um, gave him a massive opportunity uh, to bluff on the turn in the river. Uh, unfortunately, he didn't take it, but we weren't going to get any value from it anyway. Um, all right, let's have a look here. Uh, this is, I think this has got to be a a misclick. Um, I don't understand why I chose to min raise when he has less than 10 big blinds. I think this should just be a shove with an ace. Um, I said at the start of the part that I made some pretty funky plays. Um, just Maybe I was just trying to experiment a little bit. And I thought that if I raised here, he wasn't going to be shoving with anything worse than mine. But I think that could be absolutely the case that he is shoving loads of ace, all the aces worse than ours. And then, um, well, Broadway hands as well. And I don't really want to give him that opportunity. So I think I should just be shoving here in the, in the first instance. Uh, so I think that was a a poor play from uh, from me. So Tiago carries on his aggression. Um, Botos, uh, can you see what Botos is like? This is apparently a shark over 369 games. Um, I think he's played made some pretty interesting plays so far. He's defending quite wide from the big blind and just giving up to a C bet. Uh, I think this is fine. Um, Suddenly back down to only 20 big blinds. Uh, check, check. Wow, that's interesting. Let's go back. So this guy decides to check and open a straight draw, probably looking to check, shove the flop. Uh, picks it up, black bets for value. Pretty big bet. Um, this guy just decides to call with the set and then... A kiss just puts him all in. Pretty unlucky to uh, flop a set. Uh, I think. I just. I mean, this is. I think this is a really bad play uh, to flat with this stack size, um, with a hand sort of as vulnerable as sevens. Um, interesting to see. Let's have a look. Um, yeah, so I mean, I, I don't know how his ability is this is is this high on shots. I don't really know much about this, how they calculate this ability number. Um, but I think we've seen him make some really fishy plays. And if this is the kind of player um, that is frequenting the forty dollar tournaments, then there's still hope for us all. Um, and if he's managing someone, this player is this this week managing to make money, um, then you know the rest of us are going to do really really well. So we are down to five players, uh, six hundred sixty-one dollars locked up, which is uh, which is nice. Now I'm probably going to run for another five minutes in this review. Uh, picking up the aggression, don't want to give up too many too many buttons opportunities to steal. A raise and a shove there. Raise and another shove. It tends to work to be lots of raise and folds, or raise calls and folds to see bets, or raise shoves at the moment. Uh, we had pretty good odds there, but um, we have a pretty crap hand um, to defend within the stack size is not really going to help us out too much. 
this I think this is one of these weird spots yeah um I think this is a really interesting um spot we obviously have a really really strong hand um and my play is probably going to surprise you quite a lot um I just think if we think about the kind of hands that he's choosing to shove here um any pair we're a coin flip uh, against, um, which we would be happy to take um, earlier on in the tournament when there's obviously, um, you know, in terms of plus chip EV or, or just chip EV, um, it's a good spot uh, to make the call. Um, but with the hand, I mean, Ace King is still a drawing hand, um, and so against even a hand like Pocket Twos, we are still um, flipping. You know, we're still actually actually behind. Um, at this stage, I just I, I didn't fancy um, flipping um, for my tournament life. Um, and I'm pretty evenly stacked with the other th these three players around the table. This guy is playing very aggressively, um, and no doubt is shoving a hand much much weaker than mine. I mean, we can really quickly just look at this. Um, let's say he, dec he decides to go with any pair. I mean, this is a this is a pretty tight range. Um, we only have 52.666% equity against this range of hands. Uh, if we take out um, aces, kings, and queens, let's say, so your equity is going to go up. Um, but it's only up to 55%. So 45% of the time, um, we get eliminated from this tournament. Uh, and I'd much prefer to be the person shoving in ace, king suited rather than having to call it off here. So I did make a, a, a fold. Um, I know that some of you are going to absolutely hate that. Um, you know, should be looking to get Ace King suited in here, um, and perhaps I should have done. Um, but hopefully, I just kind of justified why I chose to fold. Um, I think that was an interesting one. Uh, post your thoughts on that in the forum, and let me know what you think. We're down to fifteen big blinds here as well. Uh, so that's the other thing to think about. Uh, am I going to get? Am I going to get another opportunity to? Um, to get it in uh, with a really strong hand. Um, so that would point me towards actually getting it in with Ace-King suited there. Um, so that you know may have been a mistake, but as I said, I've just I think I've justified the reasons for getting it in. Uh, sorry, failing, not not getting it in. Get a walk there with suit Ace, that's nice. Uh, sevens here. Again, this is, so Ciego's been opening quite a lot, and I'd much prefer to be the guy shoving in here uh, than the person um, uh, trying to make a call. So if say he decides, if I raise, he shoves. I don't want to be calling it off with sevens. But here I have fold equity on my ha on my side and also hand equity. He does make the call with ace jack, and we just have to win a race, and we do, which is great. Um, now he could easily be doing this. Um, what was going to say? Uh, yeah, he. I mean, his range is really, really wide there. He. I mean, this is towards the top of his range. Uh, for raising in this in this spot because we have seen him open quite a lot, um, so you know we, I guess we got I mean we got lucky in that we uh, won a race. Um, uh, not sure this is a good raise. Um, we are raising into a big stack in the big blind. Um, Diego carries on with the aggression. Gillet has pretty small stack now. Um, so, um, do I like this shove? There's three players to act behind us. Um, we have a lot of fold. If we decide to shove, we have a ton of fold equity, and they, they, these players really have to wake up with a very strong hand. Um, I'm pretty sure we are ahead of this guy's opening range. Um, but, and it said, we need 44.4% to break even. Um, but again, it's going to be 55% of the time here that we lose half of our stack. Um, well, uh, not quite half of our stack. If we lose here, we get down to 100k, we still have a fighting chance of uh, finishing the tournament. Obviously, we could get called by one of these two bigger stacks, um, which would suck for us. Um, but I just, maybe I was still thinking about the ace-king hand and thought this is a good spot to get it in, uh, as it turned out to be. So we're down to four players, so... Uh, after winning one flip and 
uh, one all in one way ahead. Well, it's $950, so we're close to that four figure score, which is uh, always nice. Um, this would be a good, I think this is a good spot to uh, to flat. Um, he's made it quite a big here, well, a lot bigger than he, his previous raises. Um, so, you know, we're not quite getting four to one, uh, but we are getting 3.6 to one with a suited uh, two gapper. So I think that could be a good spot to, to flat. Uh, so we just go try and go through to the next hand where there's anything of note. Very 6-2 off suit here. Um, Four-handed now um, with a player who needs a decent hand to, to be shoving in the big blind. It's a good spot to, to raise. Uh, don't get through this time. Interesting flat um, on the button with this with his stack size. Okay, so AA Kiss is uh, opening up really, really wide now. Uh, so B could be a perfect candidate to 3-bet. Uh, or definitely defend that sort of 9-6 suited hands. Um, these ranges this wide. Um, Botos is flat. It sort of shows that he's... Um, yeah, I mean, looking at this, he's... Uh, I wonder if he's won, like, a massive tournament. Um... So he won a tournament then for 6k and this tournament for so for 1.6 so like 8k. Um, yeah, so I guess just uh, took a couple of big scores um, and then quite a break like this break-even stretch here um, doesn't really tell me give me too much indication. Um, some of his plays have just been uh, very sort of passive. Um, if you recognise that AA Kiss was opening wide, um, but he's not prepared to three bet in this instance, I suppose a flat would be okay. But he's just giving up a lot of equity, um, and if he decides to bet again, he's going to have to fold. Um, so, I don't know. It's kind of one to keep an eye on, I think. There um, decides to shove against us. That seems fine. I'm really too much to write home about here. Um, I could choose to three bet here, fairly small. Um, with this guy's stack size, he kind of has to full bet or fold. Although we've already seen him flat with a 20 big blind stack, so he could well do that again. Um, Ace nine here, pretty strong hand um, on this on this board as well. Uh, he just just decide to fold though. Um, the reason why we would choose to bet there rather than checking down, we've got pretty strong hand top pair top kicker is there going to be a lot of turn cards that uh, devalue the strength of our hand um benny 10 plus uh, you know spades fives eights kind of makes things more complicated to play um and could um open up opportunities for this player to be fairly aggressive uh, so that's why we'd want to bet there rather than checking it back um I'm well, continuing to steal and continue to be uh, three bet shoved on, and then we're down to 20 big blinds again. So maybe I need to sort of rein that in a little bit. Um, just look along here, trying to see if there's a hand we play. Decide to let one go. Uh, open the jack nine off suit. Right, we'll end the end the video there. Um, we're going to about 50 minutes. Um, so I hope that's been uh, useful. Um, we had about 10 or 15 hands at the final table bubble um, and then we got to the final table. So what we've looked at today is um, why being the aggressor is much, much, much better, uh, especially at a final table. You make life complicated for your opponent. Um, I showed a really tight uh, fold with Ace-King suited, kind of gave my reason for it. At the end of the day, Ace-King suited is a drawing hand. Um, Chances are Diego Diaz had a much weaker hand than us, um, but I just wasn't prepared to um, risk risk it there. Um, 
And then we looked at uh, call, uh, three bet shoving with sevens because we had full equity on our side as well. And then um, there's a chance that uh, we can win a race as well, uh, which we did, which is nice. Um, and then we got ace jack off suit in against a player with less than or fewer than 10 big blinds um, with only three players left to act behind us. And talked about the merits of that and things uh, that could go wrong, like someone waking up with a really big hand. Um, but I think it was a pretty pretty good decision. Um, so yeah, ge general things then, be much more aggressive at the final table, don't play passively like I did in certain spots. Um, and uh, yeah, you can uh, lock up fourth place. Uh, we've still got 109 hands to go, so we should get through those in the next part. Uh, so this has been part five. Uh, expect part six to be the last part. And yeah, this has been Gazelic for grinderschool.com. As ever, leave some messages. Um, send me send me some direct messages. Um, leave a comment uh, in the forum. Um, you can tweet me uh, at Gazelic Poker. Uh, if you're interested in coaching at the moment, um, I've got a couple of openings for uh, for new students. Um, so let me know about that. Um, if you if you're interested in that, I've uh, got some really competitive rates. Um, and love to start working on your game. All right. So this has been Gazelic for GrinderSchool.com. Till next time, have a great time at the tables. Cheers, guys. See you later. Bye.